This is the new Ableton Move. It's a drum machine, sequencer, sampler, and standalone hardware unit for making music. I've had it for about a week, and by the end of this video, you're gonna know the truth about Ableton Move and whether it's something you wanna buy right now or skip for next time. So is it a mini push? Not really. It has a similar form factor, encoders, you've got the buttons, transport controls. Instead, on this, you've got dedicated step sequencer buttons. You have an interface that unlocks all the different modes underneath, and you have built-in sounds. Pretty solid overall. I'm not a huge fan of Ableton presets, but there's tons of usable ones on here. Great for making music. 1,500 sounds included. There's a built-in mic, built-in speakers, a line-in, a USB port for MIDI on the back. A lot to like on this unit, but let's see. What are my favorite features? My favorite thing overall is the form factor. Just the size overall. It feels very premium, but it's lightweight. So just enough weight, just enough heft and quality with the controllers and the pads and the buttons. It's a little strange having to hold shift to sort of have a modifier to access all the tools, especially things like tempo, and groove and metronome. So there's a few, few things that feel like a little bit of a stretch with that. I love the simplicity and I am embracing the limit so far. So only four tracks, which is actually fine. Eight would be amazing. Maybe that'll come out in a future update, but there's a lot of great stuff on here. Built-in onboard effects. You've got onboard effects in drum sampler. You've got reverbs, choruses, channel EQs. Let's take a look at some of these sounds that are built in. Tons of reverbs, saturators, bit crushers, delays, and you can run two of those effects. And you also have compression and saturation on the master, which is really handy for just gelling that whole mix together. Very thoughtful for them. There's a limiter at the end that you can't control, but when you export a set into Ableton Live, you'll see that limiter right there at the end, that new improved limiter, which is great. So overall, very high quality build, very useful, very playable. There are three ways to record. You can record by firing away. In the standalone mode, you can do it through step sequencing, all the steps there, and you can do it through capture. And capture has been a game changer. I think it's even better on this than within Ableton Live. So it's just like on push, you hit the capture, you can uh, grab those MIDI notes from what you just performed, even though you didn't hit record. Hit the quantize like that, and it'll quantize the clip, put it right on the grid, and then you can nudge it, swing it, do whatever you want. Uh, all very intuitive. There's a built-in arpeggiator. There's note repeat for doing fun little ratchets, things like that. When you create a new set, which is cool, this is actually very creative, it randomizes which instruments are assigned to the tracks. So it'll put um, drift, wavetable, or the drum sampler on different tracks. Each time you do a set, it'll do a randomization. So that's a great starting point and that uh, removes some of the friction of the first steps of creating music. One of the coolest things you see is that you can bring in your own sounds. It's a little wonky in the process, but you can take your own splice samples if you want, export them in the right format and the right structure, and you can import them in here. Uh, you can save everything to the cloud, which is handy, Ableton Cloud. Uh, so you can do drum sampler and drift presets for now. Maybe Wavetable is coming soon and maybe there'll be more instruments coming later on. One of my big questions I had for Ableton was, can I take stems of existing songs and bring those in and have those fire away? Even though this is sort of note-driven composition rather than audio clips and loops, uh, can it handle that? And it can. You just have to stretch a MIDI note through the, the full four bars, so it's legato for four bars or eight bars, and that way you can have your song playing. <laughs> You can launch them all at once. And that way you can play synths on top, add additional layers, additional percussion. And what's nice is you can play up on top. So that's nice to be able to jam over your tracks, add more layers. That's one way to get around the four track limit. Um, some other ways around the limit are that you can resample audio in. You can take line in, you can resample audio as it's playing on move, which is really cool. And you can always have more stems imported and have just one stem per pad. So some creative ways around that. Overall, the sound quality is great. Uh, the built-in speaker is okay, it's fine for this. 
but uh, everything so far, great sound quality coming out. That, that's definitely helped by having dynamics and saturation on board on the master and on each track. The effects are great. All right, we're gonna get hands on and take a look at some actual tracks I've made on Move and just see how it all works. All right, let's hear what it sounds like if I'm gonna manipulate that lead in real time, maybe change some of these encoders. It's really cool that you can use Ableton Link to sync other devices. Still waiting on CDJs to have that implemented. That'd be amazing if we could sync to Pioneer CDJ 3000. So wait and see. I've been pressuring Ableton and Pioneer to do it. Maybe they'll get on board. Right now you can only record with Ableton Link in uh, Recordbox in performance mode on the laptop. So I wanna get away from the laptop and just have the CDJs and have the move ready to go. Overall, you have a lot of possibility, not just in the studio, not just on the road, but during performance as well. Uh, the ability to fire clips, add layers to your tracks, add buildups, uh, add groove, and really enhance your sets without taking up a big footprint would be really nice. And I've been dabbling with this live, using it to fire clips and personalize shows for the crowd. The move actually fits just right on the CDJ 3000 and pretty stable. You can put it on the platter or you could put it on uh, the screen, on the touch screen on CDJs and it works okay. So lots of potential there. Now I think Ableton and other videos have been saying this is just a sketch pad, just a starting point, but I think it could actually be much more. Once they unlock some more features, some more abilities, maybe more tracks, maybe add side chaining, multi-band compression, multiple MIDI, independent MIDI outs and ins, MIDI clock. Once you add a few more features in there without having feature creep, um, the power of this thing could grow exponentially. So I think it could be much more than a sketch pad, but we'll have to wait and see. Right now, the limitations are pretty stark. Uh, you have four tracks. I feel like later on that could be expanded to eight. Maybe you scroll to it, or maybe they expand the width of the unit and add four more controls there. Uh, right now, so four tracks. You've got limited onboard effects, but that's handy. The display is a little bit annoying because you can't always read the full preset name. So if I go through, it, things will get cut off and abbreviated. You don't always know which is the right sample to select, which is kind of annoying and doesn't auto scroll. So you have that limitation. Uh, you have the limitation of only one MIDI track at a time, which is annoying. I really want to be able to sequence four independent MIDI tracks and sequence my whole studio and just get away from the computer for a little while. So that's probably something more that the push does. Maybe they don't want to cannibalize push sales, but move is could be great for that. It'd be a great companion. Uh, the step sequencer is handy. It can be a little annoying because you have to hold shift and press a few controls to tweak things, but minor gripes on that. The workflow is a little strange uh, when you're exporting and importing your own presets. Uh, using Move Manager is a little odd because Ableton Cloud is working in browser in the DAW, but with Move Manager, you're in your web browser. So two different worlds. I hope that they merge those in a more cohesive way. Maybe it's a temporary workaround, but it works for now. It's fine. The ability to bring your own presets in is amazing. Thank God you can do your own drum samples. Uh, bring your stuff from Splice, wherever. It sounds great. Right now, as I mentioned, there is no way to sync with CDJs, just record box in performance mode. Uh, the Move will not receive MIDI clock. It also won't uh, receive MIDI continuous controller CC messages. So some weird limits that don't seem like they would really tax the unit. Move also works in controller mode other than standalone mode. So you can control live with it. It's cool, it's pretty limited, but there's a weird bug where if you have that plugged into your laptop or desktop, and then you go bring this to the show, it's gonna be looking for Ableton uh, and won't switch back into standalone mode if you don't connect it again. So just a note, maybe they'll fix that pretty soon. Lots of updates to come. And if it's funny, if you look at the menu, 
you'll see there's some missing spots here. So there's definitely room to grow. Maybe they, that will unlock with a firmware update. It looks like there's a hidden lock logo here. Maybe I'm seeing things, but I've heard people saying they can see things in this sort of dimly lit area, some hidden Easter eggs in there. Or maybe they're just major features waiting to launch. Please, sidechain, I hope that happens. We definitely need sidechain, be able to set the target, set the destination. That would make a huge difference. That feels like the biggest thing that's missing right now. Sidechain and maybe a little multi-band compressor. That is my view of Ableton Move. I think it is definitely worth your money right now. It is not cheap, but I think it is fairly priced. It's an incredible unit, feels great, sounds great, very usable on the road. I've played with it live, I've played with it in the studio, I've done tracks in the airplane, and it definitely delivers. So that's the truth. Able to move, it's amazing, it's out now. It's back ordered in some countries, but uh, check it out, and I think it's gonna get even better, and hopefully we'll get beyond just a sketchpad. So enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe.